Sujita, thank you for taking time to talk with us today. There's a lot to talk about, but we won't keep you too long here. But uh, I would like to talk to you about something that I noticed that you and your organization were doing in the past week and past few days. It's the Global Peace Index. And I want to ask you specifically if you could assess the security situation in the region first and then in Latvia. Yeah, when it comes uh, to the region, then uh, the Global Peace Index, uh, which uh, we were presenting in Baltic states, because we are not the, those who research and do this index, but still uh, we, we were cooperating to present it. So the index demonstrates that overall situation globally, and especially in our region, uh, is uh, really uh, turbulent, I, sh I should say. And it seems that uh, uh, we are facing and will continue to face a uh, mm, really dangerous situation. So what the index shows is that uh, the, 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 the situation is, uh, is so much worsened that it is uh, the worst situation in the history of measuring the index, right? So, and of course, uh, one of the main reasons uh, uh, is the Russia's war in Ukraine, but it is not limited only to, to Russia's war in Ukraine. Um, for a region which I represent, uh, the, the most painful, of course, is the war, and we really feel the impact of the war. Uh, but at the same time, uh, another issue, which is very topical for all the democratic states, um, it is regarded to the, let's say, internal threats, which are quite connected with the um, moods in societies. And this index also mm -hmm. demonstrates that uh, violent uh, and not only violent protests uh, uh, become uh, one of uh, very important issues to be discussed uh, since they also influence uh, this um, security situation. And at the same time, um, taking in account that the protests come out of uh, the fact that societies are not satisfied with the, the governments, uh, then uh, there is kind of, um, you know, uh, the two-way streets. Uh, on one hand, uh, society starts to protest uh, and uh, because of insecurity, but protests themselves, uh, they make even more insecurity. So this is kind of making security situation even worse. Uh, that's why I would say that this it is kind of two-way street. Um, when we speak particularly about Latvia, then again, we should return uh, to the war. Uh, and um, although the situation in our country is stable and we really trust our allies uh, as a NATO member state, uh, we uh, do a lot of homeworks ourselves in order uh, to fulfill uh, not only Article 5 of um, uh, NATO, right, but also other articles which say that uh, states should do uh, themselves a lot in order to secure uh, their societies uh, and their borders. So we see serious steps done by government in order to increase um, defense budget. Uh, also, what we see is that uh, civil society is reacting to what is happening and is uh, looking for new ways um, in order to build uh, private um, governmental partnerships or private public partnerships. Um, uh, the, the, also, there are a number of different uh, activities in order to uh, make the uh, situation more stable and to create, uh, let's say, a uh, more resilient society uh, since the war in Ukraine dem demonstrates how important is the resilience itself. On another hand, uh, security is not only about military. And for this reason, I should uh, also speak uh, about economic issues. And um, 
the situation in autumn was kind of uh, quite uh, depressive, taking account that uh, Latvia had uh, 100, almost 100% 100 uh, dependency on Russian gas uh, in the beginning of the year. Uh, we had the uh, electricity dependency as well, uh, although we started uh, several years ago uh, to develop new uh, ways how to get electricity from Scandinavia. Uh, but uh, at the same time, uh, this depression was, uh, was kind of our, um, the, the, society, the society was able to overcome uh, crazy high prices and um, and the kind of uh, scary situation because of strong support to, towards Ukraine and very quite understanding that we can't continue to be dependent on Russian um, energy. So, uh, uh, so uh, okay. as a result, okay. starting from 1st of January, we do not buy any Russian gas anymore. And by today, we can say that we we have returned to the prices of gas, which were um, relevant to the uh, to to the price which was before twenty fourth of February. So the situation okay. is getting better. All right. So let me ask you a few questions, um, just short questions, short answers for some of the things you mentioned. You said that it's a turbulent situation. Ukraine is one thing, and it's not just Ukraine. You said that economics are an issue as well. What else, aside from those two things, are the problems that make it a turbulent time? Uh, so, um, war, economics, uh, economic, uh, the economical situation is still uh, dependent also on COVID uh, consequences, right? Then also uh, another issue which is still there uh, is um, the kind of uh, um, let's uh, it, I would say cleavages between uh, two uh, ethnic uh, communities here and not really ethnic I would say linguistic would be more proper to say between Russian speakers and Latvians and uh, and and this is challenge which we have faced for 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 already 30 years and the situation with the war has um, kind of um, promoted uh, even more um kind of hate speech between communities at certain moments and uh, the, the on one hand we can see that there is a window of opportunity uh, on another hand uh, there, there there are to, at the moment, uh, there are no clear ways how to use this window of opportunity to integrate uh, Russian speakers uh, in uh, the, the society. So uh, that's why this issue is also uh, important. Uh, another is a uh, financial background, but the, the financial background is a um, kind of issue for all the European uh, Union. And yeah. this will be topical for, 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 for long term. So, you know, I was at your Riga 2022 conference uh, and, you know, thank you for having me uh, to participate. It was a great conference and, a, and, a, and I learned a lot of nuances about the situation in Latvia and in and around the region as well. Um, but back to the general problem that the entire region is facing and latvia is certainly like the other baltic states leaning very forward on dealing with this there is news that vladimir putin's health is suffering and there are questions about how what the situation is and no one seems to know the answer about that but what has been made clear is that you know, eventually Vladimir Putin will leave office, whether it's from health or whether it's because, you know, of other reasons. What is, for Latvia and to your knowledge, the other Baltic nations, what are you expecting when this time comes from Russia? Will Russia change? Will it become a different kind of country or do you expect more of the same? 
Um, I, I, in, in, in the middle and longer term, I do expect the same. I am not very optimistic. And actually, uh, I would say that experts in here, they share this uh, opinion. Mm, because we need to remember that uh, mm, it is Russian society who gave the birth to Vladimir Putin as he was. And it is uh, Russian society uh, which sends uh, sons to war to kill Ukrainians. And there, uh, although uh, there are certain parts of society who, which are against mobilization, but uh, as long as they could support war from their sofas, they felt convenient with this war. And for this reason, I, I'm not optimistic. Uh, the empirical thinking is still there. It, it has not disappeared. Uh, it is not about only uh, Vladimir Putin uh, and his personality. And another issue is that I'm not that optimistic about uh, Russian political elite uh, around Putin. Uh, since uh, what we hear from uh, mm, those who research Kremlin uh, more is that basically uh, the, the, uh, the 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 elite is supporting war uh, in a way that either they want to make it more intense or they want to to wait a little and then continue. But there is no kind of uh, opinion that, that Russia should fully stop. For this reason, we are not optimistic on that issue. But for Baltic states, the 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 the, the war in Ukraine is the the kind of essential issue because we strongly know that in case of if, but I don't think it will happen. But in a case Ukraine will would lose, we would be the next. Yeah. So that yeah. war is essential. Yes, I've heard that a few times. Um, that. If Ukraine loses this war, all of Europe loses, and the Baltic states are the closest to Russia. So this is to the next point. There is a ceasefire that's underway for a few hours, a few days. And um, most of the people that I've spoken to from Ukraine and here in the U.S., they don't think this is a ceasefire at all. They think it is just an opportunity for Russia to take a break because they're be being beaten so badly on the battlefield and losing so many troops, they need a break. What's your view on that? First of all, indeed, this is just uh, kind of uh, another uh, information campaign from Kremlin's side. And the second is that uh, although uh, it was uh, said already that ceasefire has started, but right before the interview, I watched uh, watched uh, some Ukrainian news, and nothing has stopped. Actually, there are particular parts which uh, are more quiet, but there then there are other parts where, uh, where, where fire is still on. So there is no real ceasefire. Yeah. And of yeah. course, uh, yeah, experts are uh, speaking about. Uh, and actually, uh, even uh, Zelensky was uh, was saying that uh, it is. Uh, only about the, the, the ways how Russia tries to dislocate uh, the, 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 their soldiers and to give some break for them. Yeah. So let's get back to, to LATO and what you're doing. You have a very ambitious agenda, I'm sure, for this year uh, and for the, the near future. So can you give us a sense of what it is that the um, Latvian Transatlantic Organization is working on right now? So Latvian Transatlantic Organization is working uh, mainly on uh, NATO's agenda in order to 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 build uh, civil society support uh, to NATO's agenda. But um, at the same time, we work on uh, more wide uh, uh, security agenda as well. And uh, there is no wonder, taking account how NATO has changed uh, and. Uh, how many new issues are coming in, right? Uh, starting from resilience of society, women, peace and security, et cetera. And actually those are the issues we, we, we work with. Um, but of course, the main, uh, main our project or kind of uh, um, a special, um, a special trademark for not only uh, LATO, but uh, I would say for our uh, state is uh, um, Riga conference, 
Thank you very much for joining us last year. And we, we, we really appreciate the great expertise you shared with us. And we we'll really hope to see you next year, uh, you. this year already. Uh, so uh, what we can say about the Riga conference, um, uh, soon we will celebrate almost um, 20 years uh, of uh, the conference. And uh, it has become, I would say, um, key uh, security conference in the Nordic region. Uh, and this allows us to bring together experts, uh, policymakers, and uh, academia, uh, and other many other uh, stakeholders, including private business, etc., uh, to uh, discuss uh, critical issues uh, which are regarded to regional security, but not only limited to this. Uh, so, um, also, we work with uh, youth, uh, and for this reason, uh, we have this special side event, which is called the uh, uh, Riga Conference Future Leaders Forum, and uh, what we uh, have noticed that those guys, young guys who uh, joined us uh, several years ago, or just some years ago, the, uh, very soon they become either experts or, or, or policy makers, so we see really the impact um, of um, what they can uh, do later on. Uh, but at the same time, as I said, we have other projects as well. We have a Women, Peace and Security program. Uh, and this uh, with this program, what we are trying to do is uh, to support the young professionals here uh, in Baltics um, uh, in order to build up uh, their um, confidence because the, uh, you, mostly they are crazy good and they just need uh, a very good network and to build up the confidence that they are good. Uh, but uh, uh, at the same time, of course, we do other courses. Like, for example, in November, they had uh, um, the special group of uh, young leaders. They had uh, negotiations course. Uh, uh, also, we have mentorship program where um, the top political and security leaders from uh, uh, Latvian government, from ministries, they do mentoring for these young professionals. And there are many other activities what we do with this. And there are several resilience projects, uh, which uh, we uh, we provide here in, in Latvia. And in this year, we hope to um, widen our um, spectrum and we hope to also cooperate with Moldova. We do cooperation with Ukraine, uh, and let's see how it's uh, going to develop. Well, you certainly have a lot going on, and you cer certainly have a lot to do, and um, I am hopeful that everything works out successfully for what it is that you're planning. I know that um, there is a lot of excitement about what's happening there in, in, in Latvia, and uh, the same is true in Lithuania, and 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 in Estonia as well, because of the fact that you work so closely together, and that is very important at this time. And perhaps you know, some of that spirit will spread to other places as well. Because I don't think before this war started, people really knew just how closely knit the Baltics were. Is that right? Um, in a way, it is. Uh, uh, let's say that uh, before war, uh, we could still meet people who didn't know where the Baltics are. And then we had to somehow explain about Baltic Sea, etc. Uh, but at the same time, indeed, uh, 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 unfortunately, the situation of the war, uh, I would like uh, to see other situation when we would, uh, uh, would take leading roles. Uh, but the, um, the situation of war demonstrated that uh, the leaders, uh, political leaders of Baltic states uh, can become um, also leaders uh, uh, in at European level or transatlantic level in order to promote uh, certain uh, security issues into political agenda. And this is how we see that uh, Baltic states are those who are pushing uh, uh, through the agenda of sanctions, for example, and many other uh, uh, issues. So we really see that, uh, yes, this uh, unfortunate situation has uh, has um, kind of promoted the um, 
the obstacle that we had to take the leading role. Uh, and then also, of course, our competences, uh, our knowledge, uh, which uh, is uh, historically based since we have lived to next to aggressor for several years, uh, it allows us to, to give a certain, um, let's say, um, um, opportunity to share certain knowledge about the aggressor. Uh, you know, uh, I remember 2016 when we tried to speak up about those issues. Many uh, countries in Europe said, you know, you are kind of schizophrenic in this issue. Like we live in a more peaceful world than we have ever lived. It, it can't be that, why you are you so schizophrenic all the time? And unfortunately, now we have to say that, look, we were right. Yeah, no, that is absolutely the case here. You absolutely told us about this years before it happened. And there were examples of it happening all over Eastern Europe uh, with Georgia, Estonia, and, and many of the other countries where there was aggression. But uh, mm -hmm. I think now you have the world's attention and you will have it for a while because uh, people now see just how good the organizations like yours are that are working to deal with this on so many different levels, not just the security level, but there's the research level, there's the economics level, the education level. So thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for taking time to talk with us and share about uh, your organization today. We've been talking with Sajita Struberga. She's the Secretary General of the Latvian Transatlantic Organization. Sajita, thank you so much again. Thank you so much. And thank you for the great support we feel from uh, you, our partners.